Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite magic items out of the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Horn of Blasting. I love giving these things out. And actually, now that I think of it, I don't know that I've ever had a player that had, or, or, I don't think I've ever had a character that had a Horn of Blasting. I've given out a number of them over the years. We're going to take a look at it and why it's such a fun magic item. Also, just a real quick word on subscriptions, please do. Uh, channel's growing. Let's keep it doing going. And uh, thank you, existing uh, subscribers. I appreciate it. Also, please take a look at my Patreon. If there's anything you can do to help out there, thank you to my existing patrons. Back to the important stuff. Out of the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Horn of Blasting. Okay, the Horn of Blasting. You know, it's funny. I didn't think of it until I was doing the open, opening here. I've never had a character who had one of these. I've given out many over the years, uh, but I've never had one. That's interesting. So the Horn of Blasting. There we go. <clears throat> this magical horn appears as a normal trumpet, but it will reveal a Dweomer if detection for magic is cast upon it. It can be sounded as a normal horn, but if the correct word is spoken and the instrument then winded in the proper manner, it has the following effects. It fires out a cone of so sound 120 feet long by 30 foot wide at the base. It issues forth from the horn, and all within that area must save versus magic. Those saving are stunned for one round, and deafened for two. Those failing the saving throw sustain one to ten points of damage and are stunned for two rounds and deafened for four. And uh, with being deaf, you're minus four to hit and damage, disorientation, things or things like that. So that's kind of an interesting uh, side effect of this. Plus you're stunned for a round. I'm going to get into that in a moment. Uh, and then the second part of this, a wave of ultrasonic sound issues from the horn at the same time. And it's uh, one foot wide by 100 feet long pulse. Causes the weakening of such materials as metal, stone, wood, and the weakening equal to effect three times the damage caused by a hit from a missile heard by a large catapult. That's 18 structural points. Or sufficient to smash a drawbridge or flatten a normal cottage. If the horn, horn of blasting is winded magically more than once per day, there's a 10% cumulative chance that it will explode itself and inflict 5 to 50 points of damage upon the person sounding it. There are no charges upon the horn, but the device is subject to stresses as noted above. And each time it is used, the magical effect there to the magical effect, there's a 2% cumulative chance of the instrument shivering itself. In the latter case, no damage is inflicted on the character blowing it. Now, the 2% cumulative chance is not forever. I just do that within a 24-hour period, just like the above. And I think that was what the intent was. But it can just break to pieces in your hand uh, on a 2% chance. I've never had that happen. And I've never had uh, anyone have this thing explode in their hands for using it too many times a day. My experience has been players are very cautious when they have the horn of blasting because of the possibility of the thing blowing up in their face. So going to the interesting thing here, okay, you've got the, uh, it fires from the horn and everybody must save. Those failing the save are, are making the save, are stunned for one round and deafened for two. The interesting thing is there, if you work this as a uh, group of my players did one time, uh, the player with the horn blew the horn. It was in a, a dungeon type setting. He blew the horn took the risk of it collapsing part of the dungeon. It didn't, uh, and it stunned a whole bunch of monsters that were coming up a hallway, or hallway into a room, I think it was. And then while they were stunned, the, another player threw a fireball. So during the round they were stunned, they were hit with the fireball. They have no saving throw versus the fireball while they're stunned. So that was an incredibly effective one-two punch. They, they got stunned, whether they saved or not, uh, and took damage or not. From the horn didn't matter the fact that they were stunned for one round is what mattered and then the other player threw the fireball and then uh blasted them and they got no saving throw from the fireball the interesting thing is too you could do this with a lightning bolt as well uh as far as collapsing the dungeon wall in that instance i was i didn't really want to slow play down i thought it was an innovative use uh for the encounter so i didn't bother looking up if 18 structural points would damage the dungeon and i've since thought about that and i thought well that would depend on the dungeon itself is it in good repair is it in poor repair how old is it how new is it what's it built out of so i wasn't too worried about it in that case just because i didn't want to uh, cause a problem for the players when they were trying to be innovative with a magic item i will always encourage that when i can and if it means that i just kind of 
turn a blind eye toward a possible repercussion, I do. That being said, there are plenty of times I didn't turn a blind eye toward something and someone would win the horn and then, much to their surprise, bring the ceiling of a tavern down on them and things like that. Uh, I have done that. One guy actually blew one of these during a big bar brawl. Yes, I do bar brawls. Yes, a lot of my games start in taverns because why not? Let's face it, one of the most fun things about D&D is the good bar fight. Uh, This guy, for whatever reason, decided an appropriate response to a punch in the face was to pull out a horn of blasting, and he proceeded to blow the wall out of the bar and then bring a good portion of the second floor down into the first floor. A lot of people took damage. It was a lot of fun. This was a mostly neutral to evil group, so I wasn't worried about alignment and things like that because it didn't really matter. But, of course, they did have to get on a, have to get on a dodge pretty quick for all the uh, damage they caused. And what should have been just a simple bar fight, I thought that was really funny. Uh, I do use this. I let players use this if they want to blow out that uh, drawbridge that, that or the, the portcullis that needs to be taken down so they can get into the castle and things like that. That's absolutely what it's for. I've had players do overkill with this thing and just use it to blow in a, a door that's suspected of having a trap in a dungeon. Uh, I love the Horn of Blasting. It's just a lot of fun. You find players get really innovative uh, with the horn, and that's really why I like it so much, because it does encourage the players to really think about it and uh, kind of scratch their heads and say, well, what can I do? How can I make this the best use? And let's face it, with only a 10% chance of it, exploding in your hands for 5 to 50 points of damage, uh, most players are going to win this thing at least twice a day. Uh, I know most of my players will take that chance, and I've never had one explode, as I said, although I have rolled it, and I do roll the 2%, but I only roll that if it's used within 24-hour period. So if somehow someone were to use this thing you know, four times in a 24-hour period, not only would they have a 40% chance or 30% chance of the thing exploding in their hands, uh they would also have a 2% chance per use of the the horn just shivering itself to pieces. So like I said, I found most of my players are cautious. I've never really seen this used more than twice in a day, but it's still a great item for that use. And I'm going to take a look at an affiliated item. Uh, It's a cursed item, the Horn of Bubbles. This musical instrument will radiate magic detected for. It appears as a normal horn or possibly one of the many magical horns. It will, if it sounds a note, it call forth a mass of bubbles which completely surround and blind the individual who blew the horn for 2 to 20 rounds. But these bubbles will only appear in the presence of a creature actively seeking to slay the player who winded the horn. So their appearance might be delayed for a very short or extremely lengthy period. I had a player that I gave a horn of bubbles to because I thought it would be funny. And this was in a regular game, not a fall purchase or anything. I just wanted to see. He blew the horn and nothing happened. And he was a little confused by that. Well, later in the adventure, someone was trying to knock him out. And I thought, well, it says here, it it has to be somebody who's trying to slay the player, slay the character, and not knock him out. And since this guy didn't mean to kill him, I realized he could have killed him, but the intent wasn't there. I ruled the bubbles wouldn't pop up then. And it was probably two or three game days later when this guy got into a melee where somebody was coming at him with intent to kill him that uh, the bubbles appeared. And he was part of a large group. And I had faith that the party would come to his aid, and they did. He he took a lot of damage, and he was not happy with me, but he did uh, he did survive the encounter. One other thing I want to touch on the horn of blasting is the experience points. I give out experience points for magic items found, and the horn of blasting is worth five thousand experience points. Horn of bubbles, of course, is cursed, and is not worth any, but the horn of blasting is worth five thousand. So there you have it. That's just a quick look at the Horn of Blasting and a little side note on the Horn of Bubbles. Uh, Both are excellent. I would never, uh, I'm not saying I would never give out a Horn of Bubbles again. I would. Uh, I would give them out infrequently. And Horn of Blasting, I have, I want to say one or two active in my campaign right now, but over 40 plus years of DMing, I've given out many, many of these. Most of them have gone out of the campaign as players have come and gone. But it is a fun magic item, and I recommend it completely. That's all I've got for today from page 121. I thank you for watching. If you like what you heard and saw, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.